Hello everyone, welcome back to my class. As you know that I am Hali Manisa, teacher and lecturer of Ahlibad High School and Junior College. Today in this class, we will discuss about the chapter that is the population from social studies. Okay, here in this lesson, we will discuss about the population and the density and the growth and migration. All these points we will discuss in this chapter. Okay, here the population is a pivotal element in social studies exactly without population without uh, human beings we can't suggest a state or a government or a country or development also so here when we refer to development for all it is the people that we have in our minds exactly especially to include those who are normally marginalized in the process of development okay the idea of equality is used with the reference to the people only exactly on the other hand and other side you often hear that the people blaming that population growth why for all the problems we face why it is we will see okay the blame the lack of jobs food and the resources on the fact that we have to share with the many peoples in limited resource only the 92 percent of the working people in india are in the unorganized sector here unorganized means it is not registered by the government okay most of them are casual laborers or self-employment workers who have to struggle for work for the livelihood to earn the livelihood and uh, to earn their money they have no other social security apart from their families to support them exactly they have to struggle for work and have no other social security apart from their families to support them exactly how do we make of these contradictions it is important to understand the population numbers its distribution and its characteristics that provide the basic background for understanding the appreciation the other aspects except to the population okay for this calculation and for this understanding of a developed and the population growth for that we have to count every member of our country is it possible yes it is possible through the process of census that is the calculation of the total growth and the total population of a country that process is known as the census here the census of india provide us with the information regarding the population of our country a census is the procedure of systematically carrying and the recording information about the members of a given information okay given information about the population only here once in 10 years information is collected about all the people living in india the people who do this survey go from home to home and find out number of people living in every home in every village in every town in every city this census provide us with a lot of information such as how old people are their occupation houses education religions etc all this information we can get from the procedure called as census it is for calculating the population in a particular country or in a particular area the registrar journal and the census commission of india organize the collection and recording of these information okay here this process and this activity is done and the calculation of the population is done once in a 10 year okay here the census in india for the first time it was taken in 1872 but the first complete census however was taken in the 1881 okay here the current population of india according to the 2018 is 135.26 crores okay after that procedure now we will come to understand and we will come to know that what does the census show means it shows age structure children generally below 15 years then working age that is 15 years to 59 years and then aged is generally above the 59 years all these structures are showing through the process of census only okay first we will go with the age structure what is that we will discuss 
the age structure of population refers to the number of males and females in different age groups in country okay it is one of the most basic characteristics of a population exactly without this okay to an important degree a person age influences what she requires and her capacity of work and her capacity to work whether she is dependent on others or not etc all these things are come to know through the process of census and we can understand that what the requirements are there and how the capacity is essential to the work and in which senses it is essential and how they are independent and dependent on others okay here the consequently the numbers and the percentage of children in a population that the people of working age and the aged persons and the notable determinants of the populations is the social and economic structure exactly we name some region as a populated region and the less populated region how we can name that on the basis of population only we can say that this is the populated area and this is not a populated area here we can explain that term population and in this population how they are and what are the structures of age what they are participating in the society and how the face of population is showing towards the other societies also okay here the population of a nation is generally grouped into three broad categories and that are children working age and aged here now we will discuss in detail this here the first category is that children which is generally below the 15 years they are taken care of by the family and like everyone else this they require food clothing education and medical care and all other opportunities for growth exactly usually they do not earn their income on support of themselves exactly why because they are so small to care of themselves only so that they need the care of family of course we also need the care of our family until we become very independent okay it is not a desirable that some children are forced to work because of their economic conditions exactly okay after this children now we will see that the working age is 15 years to 59 years usually in this group form the working population in a society they are also the biologically reproductive exactly most of the people in this age group are desired decent income and the security of work absolutely correct this is the age when we can take a decision for our income and for our security of work and for our security of life and for our fulfillments and for our earning all these things and all these thinkings will come in this age only here the children and the aged often depend on the earnings of this group exactly for example parents okay who earn their age is between the 15 years to 59 years here all are depend means here the children and the aged people are depend on this age group on their earnings children also depend on parents and the grandparents are also depend on the parents here that's the example after that the working age the aged the aged is above 59 years those who have been in a salaried employment or in a organized sector may be get a retirement pension exactly so that the vast majority of agricultural laborers and the domestic workers and the construction workers and other usually continue their working as long as it is physically fit and physically possible for them exactly this group also depend on their families for the support in old age and when unable to work so also possible that their medical expenses and the higher than that are the other age groups obviously that the various ways in which the government should have a special schemes for the different age groups for example midday meal schemes and the anganwadi schemes etc and anganwadi programs are they why they are necessary and how they are helping to the aged group people and for the population what they are playing role these schemes we will see and think about it why they are necessary here after that we will discuss about the sex ratio here sex ratio is the number of females 
per thousand males in the population okay this information is an important social indicator to measure the extent equality between the male and female and men and women in the society okay we notice that so just to have a look on this graph that india population sex ratio in year 1951 to 2011 okay so now examining this figure for the country as a whole okay we notice that the number of women in india has consistently been lower than the men okay this female or male ratio the sixth ratio is a cause to concern the sense that indicates that hidden from the discrimination women and girl in a particular phase and equal opportunities for education and development also they are discriminated against in the most basic needs of nutrition child care and health also so they get less of these things as compared to males this often happens within the families yes or no exactly yes this discrimination is not always obvious this will be taken on the situation and as per the family background okay here the discrimination is different and the between girl and boy men and women male and female okay this discrimination cause the population growth and also the indicator for the population decreasing and population increasing also medical research shows that a given similar circumstances that the girl children survive much better than the boys hence if there was no discrimination the number of girls should be higher or as such as boys at least from this census survey we get the another indicator in, in india that the sex ratio at the birth is estimated to be a one not five boys for a thousand girls okay more female babies more female babies die than male babies so the census show that in the age group zero to five the number of girls who survive is much lower than the boys this can only be happen if there is some discrimination in their care and in their nutrition because otherwise the physical chance to survive well is better for girls exactly the other evidence that we have from the comparative figure if we look at the societies or the region that we have provided equality to women and provide the equal opportunities for them the sex ratio are different obviously the regions that have unequal gender relations that favor the males and that discriminate against the female tend towards the unequal sex ratio exactly it will this can happen even though they have the high incomes for example see this chart then notice that the number of women for per thousand men in haryana punjab telangana kerala and usa also it is noted that within India, certain parts like Kerala have a positive sex ratio, while some other regions are extremely biased against women. Okay, this distressing aspect of general bias, this distressing aspect of gender bias in India that shows a little sign of going away in the preference for boys over girls. Exactly, one of the worst and the manifestations of these pro-male bias is the relatively higher mortality rates of girls compared with the boys okay here the meaning of distressing is sorrow or pain okay and the meaning of manifestations means clearly show or presentation okay this is mainly because of the quick violence of the neglect of their health and their illness in the comparison with the attention that male children receive okay there has also been the case of female selective abortions due to the preference for male child parents may decide to abort the female child before the birth many families considered the female children as a burden so here the studies have shown that the priority for male children in health continues for adults okay raising the mortality rates of even adult women 
above those adult men exactly here the women's education has been a powerful force in reducing the discrimination against the women there is a definite evidence that shows the women's literacy and the schooling reduces the child mortality and the work against the selective neglect of the health of girls exactly so it is noted that within the india certain parts like kerala have a positive sex ratio while some other regions are extremely biased against the women okay here the distressing accept of the gender bias in india that shows a little sign of young away the little sign of going away the preference for the boy over girls okay one of the worst manifesting one of the worst manifestations of these pro male bias in the relatively higher mortality rates of girls compared with boys exactly here this is the mainly because of the quetvalence of the neglect of their health and the illness when in comparison with the attention that the male children receive when compared to the female children okay here the meaning of distressing is sorrow or pain okay here bias means against for some person or some group means discrimination okay unfair and the meaning of manifestations means clearly or presentation or show okay there also have been the cases of female selective abortions due to the preference for male children parents may be decide to abort the female child before the birth many families considered the female child as a burden so sad but here the studies have shown that the priority for male children in the health continues for adults and raising the mortality rates of even adults women above those of adult men exactly so here the women's education has been a powerful force to reducing the discrimination against the women exactly there is a definite evidence that women's literacy and the schooling reduce the child mortality and the working against the selective neglect of the health of girls after sex ratio now we will discuss about the literacy rates as per the census of 2011 here a person aged 7 years and above who can read and write with understanding in any language is treated as a literate okay literacy is the key to socio economic progress in a country exactly at the time of independence in 1947 only 12% of the population was literate but in 2001 it was 65% and now it grew to the 74% by 2011 okay however the 2000 census shows that there is a wide disparity in literacy rates for men up to 82% and women up to 65% it's good in our country the top most state is kerala when compare in the literacy rate okay up to here we have completed our this topics now we will discuss another topics in our another class thank you